Many thanks for joining us on another episode of the program. I am Okbayemi Owoshini. We start off with business news. Just a week after the Central Bank of Nigeria stopped mobile money operators, fintech firms Ope, Pampe, Kuda Bank, and Money Point from onboarding new customers. The Apex Bank has issued the July 7, 2024 deadline for point of sales operators to complete registration with the Corporate Affairs Corporation. In response, PS operators in the country's commercial or Lagos have expressed their displeasure considering the economic situation in the country and the short time frame. This next report completes the story. The federal government has said mandatory registration of point of sales operators nationwide will reduce kidnapping and help security agencies arrest recipients of ransom payment from kidnapped victims. It has also vowed that security agencies will go after POS operators who fail to comply with the directive. POS operators have voiced their concerns, highlighting the financial burden posed by the registration requirement and urging the government to reconsider the tight deadline. So many of us, this is our cost of living. And so many of us, even before getting this POS, I know how it takes us before getting this stamina to work with it. Some don't even have the cash at hand before getting this stamina. They had to pay instrumenta. And the, the little money that they get as a daily income, they easy to feed their family. It's not even enough. It can affect me. The reason is just that based on the registration stop, number one, the issue of registration about the money. Because not everybody can afford it, or the PS operator. For instance, let's say the registration money is 100,000 or 50,000. Some people that are uh, PS operator, maybe in a month, they are not making up to that 50,000 or 100,000. How do you expect them to carry 50,000 or 100,000 for registration? And at the long run, when they start the business and there's no enough profit on the business, it will even lead to some people, they, will, they will end up the PS stuff because they can't afford to pay the registration this thing, money. I'm sure Central Bank wants to sanitize them to ensure at the end of the day that his policy is uh, free of any rancor, it has no distractions, there will be no loopholes, there will be no leakages, and at the end of the day, a lot more people now embrace and imbibe the, the banking culture. While lamenting the short notice, PS operators have asked the government to review the implementation of the directive. It's not as if it's not a good one, it's a good one to protect our own interests. But the challenge there is the money and the, um, what's it called, the commission that they are talking about now. It's uh, the daily commission is high and the money for the CAC registration is high. And the, the deadline, the range is too close. So if I'm to look into it, they should do something about it by bringing the registration money down and the range of the registration is too close, they should extend it. Despite the grievances of POS operators, some security experts have welcomed the directive. They however urge the government to consider the logistical challenges involved in implementing such a directive effectively. Remember that POS uh, operators, some of them are just um, uh, jobless people who are trying to find something to do. And then you have sub-agents among them. Now, and you're asking them to go and register with CAC. Uh, will they have the money to register at this time? Can they, you know, get all the people in the rural areas to also comply? So these are the issues that they have to look at. Um, otherwise, the regulation is fine uh, where you want... Um, all the uh, financial uh, dispensers, so to say, uh, registered and you know who they are and they can be traced. But uh, you have to take care of these logistics. The Corporate Affairs Commission has already inaugurated a center for the bulk registration of POS operators. The leadership of the commission says the center is fully equipped with state-of-the-art facilities and sufficient personnel to handle applications efficiently, operating around the clock to meet the demands of the project. Okpayemi Owoshini, TV360 News, Lagos. We'll go on a short break and be back with the latest happenings in the corporate world.
Welcome back. The National Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, has called for renewed efforts towards building strong depositors' confidence in banks and other financial institutions through adjudication. The NDIC made a call at the 2024 Sensitization Seminar for Justices of the Appeal Court in collaboration with the National Judicial Institute and underscored the need to collaborate with critical stakeholders in ensuring a safe and sound financial system in Nigeria. This next report has more details. The sensitization seminar is one of the initiatives of the NDIC to engage the judiciary as an important arm of government towards achieving its mandate of a sound financial system in Nigeria. The event brought together justices of the Court of Appeal to brainstorm on issues that may arise from federal resolutions and deposit insurance issues to ensure the safety of depositors' funds in the country. Banks primarily operate with depositors' funds rather than the funds of the business owner. Considering the inherent risk associated with banking and the need to ensure the safety of depositors' funds, banks are generally regulated and supervised. In addition to the surveillance, depositors are further provided with protection by our deposit guarantee scheme. This scheme provides seamless and continuous access by depositors of their funds upon license revocation by the licensing authority. The seminar provides a platform to better reposition judges to deal with contemporary financial disputes and develop core competency in banking matters. This seminar and other events since it was first held in 2012 is a collaborative effort between the National Judicial Institute and the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation. The forum is aimed at better positioning judges to deal with complex contemporary financial disputes and develop core competencies in banking matters as it relates to the law and practice of deposit insurance, culminating in speedier dispensation of justice. My lords, you will agree with me that this seminar is relevant in light of recent and burgeoning developments in the banking sector in Nigeria. The banking sector, as we all know, is dynamic and as such, justices and judges are encouraged to be in tune with the current and emerging practices in the sector. The seminar is very important both to the judiciary and to our society at large because in, in a society like ours, there must be confidence in commercial matters. And if we narrow that down to banks, when banks are sick or failing, it is a problem. And when there is a problem, everybody runs to the judiciary. And the judiciary will have to set things right and make, draw a line, a straight line, so that in future the problem that has caused the sickness will not reoccur again. Judges were charged to expedite their judgment when settling issues. You know, when matters relating to failure resolution or deposit insurance issues are brought before them, we want them to give them accelerated hearing and dispense justice. We believe in doing so to go a long way in deepening confidence within the system. You know, banking system is all about confidence, either from the depositors or even the investors. They need to have that confidence so that things can move uh, the way we want it to be. The collaborative effort between NDIC and NGI underscores a commitment to promoting a safe and sound financial environment in Nigeria, where depositor confidence remains paramount. Okwayemi Owoshini, TV360 News, Lagos. We'll go on a break now, but when we return, we'll be discussing EFCC vowing to clamp down on businesses of that charging in dollars. I'll make you details of this after this break.
Welcome back. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says it is doubling down on its efforts to crack down on businesses and others transacting in dollars. According to the agency's acting director of public affairs, Wilson Uwajeren, the EFCC won't spare anyone on business transacting in dollars. He also clarified comments about claims of a ban on foreign missions transacting in dollars. According to him, the EFCC only issued an advisory against the ban. The EFCC spokesperson said the Naira is the only currency for transactions in Nigeria. He said beyond invoicing in dollars, a number of business went to the extreme of determining the exchange of Naira in their transactions, and that was worrying for the EFCC. This renewed crackdown on dollar transactions is part of a broader initiative to stabilize the Nigerian economy and ensure compliance with financial regulations. Well, joining me to discuss this further is economist Femi Oladeli. Thank you for joining me on the program, Mr. Oladeli. Now, um, what do you think are the main reasons behind the EFCC's decision to crack down on businesses and um, individuals transacting in dollars? Good afternoon. I'm happy to be here. And that's an interesting question because we have seen an upsurge of such happening around the country in a while now. But I, I would say that it is significant to mention that the current buzz actually relates to foreign missions in Nigeria. And so from there, we're now seeing a clamp down on other forms of businesses that are charging in dollars. And it is expected because many of those businesses, their justification is that most of their imputes are foreign currency denominated and so to make them continue to be in business they have to charge in dollars or however that is somewhat illegal if we consider the section 20 subsection one of the cbn act but it's a reality that we have now and i'm, I'm happy that the efcc is taking up this challenge i i hope that it's a worthy cause and not a witch hunt Okay, you just mentioned that there are businesses that transact in dollars. That's their primary source of um, transaction. Now, how do you perceive um, the impact of this crackdown on businesses operating in Nigeria, especially those with um, international transactions? Okay, so for those with international transactions, it's a difficult game. And I think that we have to come to the table to agree on terms. The Nigerian law only allows you to transact in Naira. Now, there are these businesses that we have that are doing that in dollars. Their justification is on one side, which is more or less an excuse. And we have our reasons as Nigerians based on the Nigerian law. So I, I think that for some exceptional cases, there might be a sort of resolution that can happen. But for the larger percentage who are doing it illegally, I think this crackdown is significant. Number one, it's going to improve the perception of the the naira i want to use layman's term so since this is a wider audience it's going to increase the value of the naira because we are not trading and we are not running elters that are looking for dollars to transact business but i have to also caution that most of those business that transact in dollars are actually for the elites you won't see a regular business transact in dollars it's the high-end businesses that do that. And so one value would be, one disadvantage might be that they will want to leave the country, but it depends on which sector they are working in. So I think that it's a 50-50. One way we, we might see improvements in the use of the Naira, and on the other hand, it might lead to some of them uh, leaving the country, yeah. So in recent time, um, the economy has seen so many policies being introduced to make it better, to make it a better situation than it is at the moment. So now, do you think the EFCC's focus on discouraging dollar transaction is a viable strategy to stabilize the economy? Okay, so I, as a public policy enthusiast, I would not take a side. I, I would look at all the issues holistically and so I don't agree with those who say that a policy has two sides. I believe that policies have many sides and many effects. So I would say, for example, that one of the significant parts of that policy is that it wants to see how to minimize the demand for dollars in Nigeria. On the other hand, there will also be those who would benefit from that and those who would definitely lose from that. And so 
this administration has shown that they are doing all they can do to strengthen the value of the, the Naira. The EFCC's clampdown on businesses who trade in dollars is one of the tools. And my, my assessment of the matter is that let's see how it goes. If we get to a point and realize that the policy is not working, we should have the confidence of humility to track back and say, let's take another route. This, for me, for example, relates to only a fraction of the society. Many businesses in Nigeria don't trade in dollars. So the little that trade in dollars, let's see if we insist that they trade in Naira, let's see if it improves the value of our Naira. If it doesn't significantly add value to what we currently have, I think we should look at other means. We should be making decisions right now on our feet, running and tweaking those policies in line with established guidelines to ensure that we're doing things right. And, and so that's what I would say. And finally, on, the, on that note, I would say that the policy has the, the, the potential of impacting the value of the Naira, but we don't know how far that would go. Because usually, like I said, there are many sides to a policy. There will be those who it would favor, those who it won't favor. Their responses also matter in the equation. Now, do you think this crackdown could um, potentially, potentially rather lead to unintended consequences, um, such as driving transactions on the ground or impacting investors' confidence? That's for investors that mainly transact in dollars. Do you think this policy and this crackdown could impact their confidence? Yes, absolutely. And, and I would insist as someone who is uh, interested in policy that some things should have been put in place before this clamp down. So for example, how robust is our tracking system? Normally when you say, oh, we shouldn't do it, it does not mean it does not exist. People would still find, people who are hell-bent on circumventing the system will still find a way, and that means we have black markets and underground deals. Are we, is our infrastructure enough, sufficient, to track all of this. If it is not enough, then the policy would only lead to underground deals, which is not good for our economy. Okay, so how do you think the reliance on Naira? Because obviously once um, dollar is no longer used for transaction, we have to rely fully on the Naira. So now how do you think the reliance on the Naira for transactions align with broader economic goals? And then um, what challenges do you think might arise from enforcing this policy? So one significant challenge, thank you for that question. One significant challenge I foresee is that people might be forced to go underground, like I mentioned earlier, and you also have also alluded in your question. The second challenge I see is that getting these businesses to become, begin to charge in Naira might become difficult because the, the values would now become significantly high something that is ten thousand dollars would now begin to run into millions and when people see that they might begin to think about it in other lights but like i mentioned many of these businesses that charge in dollars are actually elite businesses so it might not have a significant challenge in that sphere another challenge at businesses is that their accounting system might have to change a little bit they are used to computing and transacting in dollars now they have to change to naira and so they might have to do some tweaking to their accounting system and finally from the point of view of the economy i believe that the economy is going to might lose some of the dollars some people might want to hold dollars and say oh we think that this value would increase over time and if you see how the market is going right now it's possible that people begin to assume that the the, the value of the fx would increase in in the coming future so it is multifaceted there is no straight straight jacket answer to it i i think that all we can do right now is to wait and see how these things unfold but like i advised earlier the policy makers should look at ways of tweaking these policies as we go so that when there are changes we we can assess where we are and assess where we want to be and make uh, appropriate changes as required 
Okay, while waiting to seal, as you just mentioned, in your opinion, what alternative measures could um, be taken to achieve the EFCC's goals of stabilizing the economy and ensuring compliance with um, financial regulations? I, I would state categorically that businesses should respect the laws of the land. Sure. Nigerian law does not allow you to transact in dollars. We have to emphasize that. While that is given, also we have to tell ourselves the truth, which is that sometimes because businesses want to continue to thrive and we cannot shy away from the fact that the Nigerian terrain is a bit harsh to businesses, we have to also look at how they can survive even with what is going on currently. If all of my inputs are dollar denominated and you want me to charge in Naira, then I begin to want to look for other ways. So I, I would advise from the point of view of even EFCC to ensure that we build infrastructure that can help us monitor and track transactions. Because if we leave it to our current tra infrastructure, I doubt that we're able to fully capture the, the transactions that are going on. And if we're unable to do that and we enforce this policy, it means that many of those transactions will go underground, which is not good. From the business point of view, I, I believe that with sound financial management, we are able to contain uh, our losses with respect to fluctuation in in forex foreign exchange so businesses would need to begin to look at ways to edge against some of their losses that might arise because of fluctuations in the prices or in the value of our currency and finally uh, for the overall government, I believe that what we should be looking at also is building trust in the system. One of the issues driving foreign exchange is trust. Once we can build trust in the system, I believe that things will get better. Thank you. Mr. Ladin, let's talk about broader economic trends and um, challenges facing Nigeria, one of which is inflation. It's even worse to as high as 33.69% in April 2024. So now, how do you think this particular crackdown on dollar transactions might intersect with the challenges facing Nigeria, such as inflation, like I mentioned earlier, or foreign exchange reserves? Okay, so basically, every economic policy tends to harmonization. So I would say largely that the the crackdown would definitely impact on the economic uh, policy generally, but I doubt that it would have a significant impact on inflation. The reason why we have inflation, the underlying issue, and we know that food inflation is one of the highest right now, uh, are underlined by security and infrastructure. So this crackdown would definitely impact, but my opinion, my assessment, my measured opinion is that it's going to be a minimal impact on the overall economic policy of the government. Yeah. But I believe that it would have an impact, but not significant. Now, just before I let you go, for a long term perspective, what structural changes, if any, would you um, recommend to enhance the stability and resilience of Nigeria's financial system? I would say since that there are issues here and there. And so I believe that the banks are already also restructuring. We, we know about the recapitalization that is ongoing. So I believe that that is also there. In the p place of policy, I believe that there are more, there is a need for more customer centric policies in the, in the overall scheme of things. It looks like policies favor banks more than they favor the customers. So I believe that that is also necessary. And with respect to human cap capital, I believe that we need more financial experts in the areas of cybersecurity. And I'm not advocating for, for the cybersecurity levy, no. But what I'm saying is that I believe that we need capacity in that area so that because that's one of the major pain in the Nigerian financial space, cyber security, being able to undermine the, the activities of fraudulent elements in, the, in, in Nigeria and globally. So, and, and finally, I would say that on the overall space, I believe that every human being, every Nigerian has a role to play in ensuring the robustness of the financial system. We cannot 
stay aloof and just say, oh, it's their business. We also have to, and how do we play our role? By calling out things that are not, if you run a transaction and you feel it's fraudulent, you, you should mention it. If you encounter something that is not right, you should also reach out to the appropriate authorities. But generally, I believe that the financial system is robust. We'll keep improving, but I believe that the financial system is robust in Nigeria. Okay, just because you mentioned the cyber security levy, and what do you think of the cyber security levy, even though it has been suspended by um, President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, what do you make of the levy? I, I believe significantly that it was ill-timed. It should not have come out at all. The fact that it is suspended is a different issue, but it should not have come out at all at this time. Many Nigerians are already overboarding with different types of charges. I, I currently volunteer with the NESG Financial Inclusion uh, Comm Commission. And one of the things we are trying to do is to get people more financially included. But with these charges, it's even harder to go and market that to people, especially those in the rural areas, because their complaints would be if I even save 10,000 Naira, by the time I come next month, it's less than 9,000 Naira, even sometimes way less. So this levy should not have come out at this time at all. And like I mentioned, our infrastructure is still unable to capture our data set. Once we have that recorded, then we can now begin to look at implementing those kind of uh, policies. For example, some of the exemptions, it's going to be very difficult to implement those exemptions. So the banks would be left with no option than to just do a blanket. And that blanket would affect so many people, especially those that use banking services on a daily basis. It would be a significant charge on their operating expense. So I, I believe that the policy should not have come out. I, I hope that when it is reviewed and revised and brought back, it captures the yearnings of Nigerians overall. Thank you. Well, economist Femi Oladeli, many thanks for lending your thoughts on the program. That's it on this episode of the program. Many thanks for watching. I am Okbe Yemi Owo See you next time.